Welcome, I welcome you all to the lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this course, we are studying the Paninian Grammar. In the process so far, we have studied parts of process of speech production and we continue to study it further. In order to study the process of speech production as described in the Paninian grammatical tradition, we studied the source material that we got from Paninia Shiksha. And we studied the following verses Atma, Buddhya, Samityarthan, Mano, Yungte, Vivakshaya, Manah, Kayagani, Mahanti, Saprerayati, Marutam, Marutas, Marutas, Turasicharan, Mandram, Janayatisvaram, Sodirno, Murdhya, Bihato, Vaktramapadya, Marutaha, Varanan, Janayate. Then we also said that. There are these eight stages of speech production described in these verses. They are Atma Buddhya Samityarthan as the first stage, Mano Yungte Vivakshaya the second, Manah Kayagni Mahanti the third, Saprerayati Marutam the fourth, Marutas Turasicharan Mandram Janayati Swaram the fifth, Sodirno Murdhya Vihato the sixth, Vaktram Apadya Marutaha the seventh and Varnanjanayate the eighth. We also saw that the first two stages, they describe the internal process, the internal programming so to speak. The rest of them, they describe the biological or the physical part of the process of speech production. And we have been studying this internal process for some time now. But the importance of this process should not be undermined and that is the reason why we have been studying this in little detail and we shall study this in more detail when we do the advanced course. Right now, let us study some other aspects in this first stage which are enlisted on this slide. In addition to the existence of the Arthakasha, which is structured in accordance with the principles of congruity, yogyata and mutual expectancy namely Akanksha as described in the previous lecture related to the basics of human cognitive apparatus where the sense organ and the domain are interrelated. In addition to all this, there are some other aspects to this Arthakasha which need to be studied and they are enlisted here which we shall study now. The first one is called Artha Sangraha, the second one is Artha Vigraha and finally Artha Graha. So the question is these Artha Sangraha etc. They are also linked with Shabdakasha. So, these are the parts of Arthakasha in which links of Artha Sangraha with Vakya in Shabdakasha is also a part of. Similarly, links of Artha Vigraha with Pada in Shabdakasha is also part of the Arthakasha and links of Arthagraha with the Prakriti and Pratyaya namely the root and the suffix in the Shabdakasha is also part of the Arthakasha. So what is Shabdakasha and what are the parts of Shabdakasha? Vakya is obviously 
an important part of the Shabdakash. Vakya is a sentence which is made up of padas, namely the words, which is also part of the Shabdakash. And padas are made up of prakriti and pratyaya, roots and suffixes. So they are also part of the Shabdakash. This is the basics of Shabdakash. We may also find the other derived aspects of Shabdakash in what is described on the right hand side. For example, a grantha or a book, this is also part of the Shabdakash, but on a larger scale, which is made up of its components. For example, Adhyaya or a chapter which is further made up of padas, a sub-chapter and so on, which is made up of let us say paricheda or paragraph and then vakya etc. is part of this paragraph. All this is part of the shabtakasha which is linked with arthakasha. The correlation of arthakasha and shabtakasha needs to be studied in this context. So, Artha Sangraha mentioned earlier, which is part of the Artha Kasha, is correlated to the Vakya as far as a sentence is concerned. Artha Vigraha, which is part of the Artha Kasha, is related to the Pada, namely the word. Artha Graha, let us say of Prakriti, is related to the prakriti which is part of the shabdakasha, arthagraha which is part of the arthakasha which is related to the pratyaya is linked to the pratyaya or a suffix which is part of the shabdakasha. This is how the correlation exists and the arthakasha thereby gives rise to the Shabdakash. Remember, this is still Atma Buddha Samityarthan. This is still the cognitive apparatus. This is still the intellect. We have not yet gone beyond this, but we need to understand what this Atma Buddha Samityarthan is. Shabdakasha and Arthakasha. So, this Arthakasha exists in the intellect, this Shabdakasha also exists in the intellect only as parts of the intellect we can say and they are correlated as described so far and also on this particular slide. All this is part of the intellect, part of the stage of Atma Buddha Samityarthan. So next question is, what is Artha Sangraha? So the next question is, what is Artha Sangraha? As is visible, there are three words mentioned here, Artha, Sam and Graha. Let us look at their meaning. So, Artha Sangraha stands for a specific unitary meaning as a whole. Artha is meaning and Sangraha is a unit cognized as one, cognized together. What it stands for is a specific unitary meaning which is indivisible, also known as akhanda. And here the word graha can be compared with the star. Akasha can be compared to the sky. And so there is one special star which is one unit. Maybe a group of stars, but given one unitary status. 
in the sky of Arthakasha. That is the connotation of Arthasangraha. If you look at this, this is Rama goes to a village, this is the meaning and there are these square brackets within which this is put. So this square bracket over here and here, these brackets indicate that this is one unit. This is one unit and this is what is primarily Sangraha or Artha Sangraha. This unit taken as one unit, one indivisible unit. Now what is Artha Vigraha? Artha Vigraha is the same one unit but separated in its many components called Padartha or word meanings. This is divisible or compositional also known as Sakhanda. We can say that many small parts making a particular star in the Arthakash. So the same Rama goes to a village as one indivisible unit of meaning can be further divided or separated in the following units. So we keep the square brackets to indicate its correlation with the one meaning which was stated on the earlier slide, but we put the parenthesis to indicate the separated units. So for example, doer Rama, this is one unit of meaning separated from the rest. Object village, this is another unit of meaning and the action of going in the present tense whose agent is third person singular third person. This is the separated padartha that we have. This is what is called artha vigraha. And what is artha graha then? Artha graha is the same many units separated further in its atomic components whereby we get what we term as linguistic atoms. These atoms are generally not divisible. We can say that these are many, many small parts making a star. So here are the small units, artha, graha, which make the vigraha and sangraha possible. They are, let us say, Rama, village, object, action of going, present tense, agent, third person and singular. These are the linguistic atoms in terms of meanings and they are the arthagrahas. They are the small stars which make the bigger units, the bigger stars and those bigger stars make one unit as one star. So this is what is Arthagraha and this is how Arthagraha is related to Arthavigraha and Arthasangraha. Let us look at the correlation with an example. Earlier we took an example namely Rama goes to a village and we put this entire meaning into square brackets which will be termed as Arthasangraha where everything is one unit, we know it as one unit. Then if we go to do Arthavigraha, we do do a Rama, object village, the action of going in the present tense whose agent is third person singular, third person, this is Arthavigraha and Arthagraha is Rama, village, object, action of going, present tense, agent, third person and singular. So this is what is the Arthakash wherein you have artha sangraha, artha vigraha and artha graha possible. And there is obviously the correlation between the artha kashas which are simple derivate and super derivates. And there is also some kind of congruity at this level 
these are all super derivates. The action of going related to Rama and village as an object and so on and so forth. There is this super derivate aspect that is playing its role over here. Now this Arthakasha at these three levels is correlated with the Shabdakasha in terms of Vakya, Pada and Prakriti Pratyaya. So the Vakya that is correlated with the Artha Sangraha is in Sanskrit Ramo Gramam Gachati. This is one sentence which expresses one meaning. So what is the meaning of Ramo Gramam Gachati? Rama goes to a village. This is how we communicate. In daily life when we communicate using language, we communicate using sentences. We utter complete sentences, Ramo Gramam Gachati. And we understand one complete meaning, Rama goes to a village. This is one indivisible unit of sentence that is Shabdakasha. This is one indivisible unit of Arthakasha. This is what is called Artha Sangraha. Now the Artha Vigraha is like this, Duar Rama, object village etc. which has a correlation in the Shabdakasha level in the form of Padas. And so this Vakya is then made up of these Padas, Ramaha, Gramam and you see this was written as Gramam with Anuswara on top of it, a dot on top of it. Now here it is written as Ma separated because this is a Pada which has an independent separated identity shown with the square brackets and Gachati finally. So here there are three Padas parts of the Shabdakasha which are correlated with the Artha Vigraha which is part of the Artha Kasha. Now if you go to Artha Graha in the Artha Kasha it is correlated with the Prakriti and Pratyaya root and suffix in the Shabdakasha level. So Rama at the Artha Kasha level as Artha Graha is correlated with the Prakriti and Pratyaya part in the Shabdakasha. Village an object, Grama an Am, action of going, present tense, agent, third person is correlated with Gama and Ti and Su at, as far as the Shabdakasha level. So this is how the Arthakasha on this side of the slide and the Shabdakasha on the right hand side of the slide they are correlated. So the Arthakasha gives rise to the Shabdakasha. This is still at the level of Atma Buddha Samityarthan. This is still located in the intellect. So this is the correlation example. Now, so far we have been studying this stage of Atma Buddha Samityarthan, namely the collection of meanings. Let us summarize it and see what all it includes. We can say that this stage includes the collection of words linked, linked to the meanings. It is these words which get converted into speech signals. Remember the collection of words here is still at the level of intellect and the meanings here are still at the level of intellect located within the intellect. Words as well as the meanings both are located in the intellect, in the cognitive apparatus. And it is these words and these meanings located in the intellect which get converted into speech signals by the subsequent stages in the process of speech production. And when these words located in the intellect, they get converted into the speech signals, we say that these express the meanings and these speech signals are then the audible speech symbols. Now these words which are still at the level of intellect which get converted into speech signals which express the meanings they are still parts of the Shabdakasha, the words at the intellect level. 
Now the collection of both the Arthakasha and Shabdakasha are independent of external means to express them. Okay? These Arthakashas and Shabdakasha and part of them they can be expressed by multiple means independently or even together. This is what is expressed by a diagram shown over here. So, in this diagram the process of speech production is described from the speaker's point of view in which the cognitive apparatus is playing over here. This is a bracket showing one unit. It consists of Arthakasha and Shabdakasha and this bracket also is corresponding with the left bracket showing that this is one unit Artha Sangraha which can be converted into Artha Vigraha which is shown internally. So, this Artha Kasha consists of lexical meanings for example, the verbal meaning as well as the nominal meaning on one side and the relational meaning on the other namely the verb and noun meaning and noun and noun meaning the relation between them and then the co-occurrence of these meanings happening in the Arthakasha. So, lexical meanings appearing together and relational meanings appearing together and then both of them appear together. So, occur together this is what is the co-occurrence this is part of the Arthakasha. This is the beginning. Now, this gives rise to the Shabdakasha which consists of the corresponding lexical items namely the verbal as well as the nominal corresponding with the verbal meaning and the nominal meaning. Similarly, the relational meaning gives rise to the relation suffixes in the Shabdakasha. These are the suffixes which indicate the relation between verb and noun and the suffixes that indicate the relation between noun and noun. These are relation suffixes. Similarly, the co-occurrence in the Arthakasha also gives rise to the co-occurrence in the Shabdakasha. The fact that these meanings are uttered, are collected in close proximity also gives rise to the Shabdas to be uttered in close proximity. Once this stage is over in the cognitive apparatus where Arthakasha and Shabdakasha have played their roles, then it is processed further in which these lexical items which are infinite in number and they involve some creativity. New lexical items are created, earlier lexical items are lost and so on. So, they are called to be infinite. These lexical items which are part of the cognitive apparatus then are propelled further and then they produce what is known as root and termination. Termination is a suffix which shows relations, root is the lexical item. So, in this particular audible speech there are three roots and three terminations and there are the square brackets as well indicating its one unitary status which consists of three words and these words also consist of three roots and three terminations. So, now these lexical items which are part of the Shabdakasha they produce this audible speech which consists of R1 and T1, R2 and T2 and R3 and T3. Now, these lexical items in the Shabdakasha have given rise to R1 which is part of the first word, R2 which is part of the second word and R3 which is part of the third word. These roots are indicated by blue lines. Similarly, the relational meaning which is part of the Arthakasha which gave rise to the 
Shabdakasha in the form of the relation suffixes which express the relation between the verb and noun and the relation between noun and noun, this gives rise to the terminations which are part of the audible speech. Termination 1 which is part of the first word, termination 2 which is part of the second word and termination 3 which is part of the third word. And then the co-occurrence which is dependent on the meanings in close proximity gives rise to the co-occurrence of the words in the cognitive apparatus gives rise to the co-occurrence of all these together which is indicated by the plus sign over here which is part of the audible speech. So, the relational suffixes are shown with the green arrows and the, the co-occurrence is shown by saffron arrows going towards these two plus signs. So, there are these three words which are made up of three roots and three terminations and these three words made up one make one sentence and these three words are interlinked they are in close proximity of one another and this is indicated by two plus signs. And so all this put together there is one whole unit which is shown by the square brackets. This is how the speaker produces the speech. So far we have been studying this process cognitive apparatus Arthakasha and Shabdakasha. Now in this diagram we show how this gets directly related with the audible speech. Now we need to study all the processes in between but still this is the outcome, this is the output and this is how the internal cognitive process namely Atma Buddhya Samityarthan is directly related to the output namely the audible speech. This is how the speaker produces the speech. Now as we said before this cognitive apparatus and these stages of Shabdakasha and Arthakasha they provide a clue to the speaker to check whether these combinations they express the Arthakasha and Shabdakasha which exists over here or not. If something goes wrong in between a speaker can cross check and the speaker can issue the corrigendum saying that the speaker did not have, the speaker did have something else in this, pro, in this stage. Popularly the speaker did have something else in the mind and something else got reproduced. So what exists in the Arthakasha and Shabdakasha over here can act as a check for what is produced in the audible speech. This is the speaker's point of view. Let us now look at what happens as far as the hearer is concerned. So the hearer first receives these signals, the audible speech, this signal. This is unitary and he cognizes one unit of this signal which leads to the cognitive apparatus and the Shabdakasha given rise to in the form of one unit which is also then separated at the level of Arthavigraha and this Arthavigraha happens in terms of the lexical items which are in finite but in this sentence they are finite and there are only three lexical items over here roots which are shown once again by the blue but the arrows are different now because now this is the input and this is the output as far as the hearer is concerned. So the arrows come from the audible speech to the cognitive apparatus as far as the hearer is concerned. So there are three blue arrows coming from R1, R2 and R3 to this Shabdakasha called lexical items verbal as well as nominal. Now this Shabdakasha which is part of the cognitive apparatus gives rise to the Arthakasha which is full of lexical meaning, verbal meaning as well as nominal meaning. 
Similarly, the relational meaning which is the output over here, now the input is the terminations, the words, terminations, audible speech. So, T1, T2 and T3 and there are green arrows coming from these three which give rise to the Shabdakasha in the cognitive apparatus and that Shabdakasha consists of relation suffixes in the form of verb and noun relation and noun and noun relation expressing suffixes. And this gives rise to the relational meaning in the form of verb noun meaning and noun noun meaning relations. And of course the co-occurrence which is in the form of these two plus signs which are finite in number and it is these plus signs which indicate the structure along with the terminations of the sentence. So, they give rise to the co-occurrence in the Shabdakasha which gives rise to the co-occurrence of meanings in the Arthakasha and then this Artha Sangraha at this stage generates the understanding what is called as understanding as far as the cognitive apparatus is concerned and then probably we decide whether the communication has actually happened or not. So, these two diagrammatic representations of the speaker's point of view and the hearer's point of view explain the correlation between the Shabdakasha and Arthakasha in the reverse order and the audible speech. Now, this can be explained in the following manner. R stands for root which is atom root in finite in number they can be created more and some of them can be lost etc. Termination suffix is called T which is called also atom T. This is finite in number. They define the structure in Sanskrit. The relations, they are the relations between roots, noun verb, noun noun and they are finite in number. Relations also act as the head of a meaning unit. Similarly, relation words that is suffixes also act as head of a word unit. Co-occurrence, the meanings are placed in proximity indicates that they be interrelated and this is also finite in number. This interrelation can be called exclusive sentence meaning namely Vakyartha. This has correspondence with the sentence where words are placed in proximity which indicates that they are interrelated and this proximity then can be said to be the exclusive vakya. To summarize what we have studied so far in the first stage atma buddhya samityarthan we can say the following. The first stage of speech production involves the overall blueprint we can say of the process of speech production. This involves Arthakasha first and then Shabdakasha and there is correspondence between the two. Shabdakasha also involves the sentence formation at this stage. It involves both indivisible as well as divisible aspect of meanings as well as speech that is Shabdakasha as well as Arthakasha and both Arthakasha and Shabdakasha complement each other. Now we shall study in the next lecture the next stage of speech production namely Mano Yungte Vivakshaya. But before closing this lecture let us follow the practice we have been following of reciting the Mangala Charana from one of the texts of the Paninian grammatical tradition. And today we shall recite the Mangala Charana of Shabda Kaustubha, a celebrated text written by Bhattoji Dikshita in the 17th century CE. And here is the verse Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya. I repeat. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya. And let us study today's five sutras. 
they are taken from the first sub chapter of the fourth chapter they are nyapradivadikat suaujas samauchas tabhyam bhis nyebhyam bhyas nasibhyam bhyas nas os am nyos sub striyam ajadya tashtap and rune bhyongip i repeat nyapradivadikat suaujas amauchas tabhyam bhis nyebhyam bhyas nasibhyam bhyas nas os am nyos sub striyam ajadya tashtap and rune bhyo ni thank you for your attention